Now it's time to make the rings. If you haven't watched the previous video yet, these rings have an NSC tag, which stands for Near Field Communication. And thanks to these rings, I can use them to turn the ignition of a motorcycle on and off. So there is no need for a physical key anymore. This is very convenient because now the rings are more than just a piece of jewelry. They have a function and that makes them truly special. Anyway, in this video, you will learn how to make bamboo rings. The name comes from the technique used to make them, which consists of running veneer strips to form the rings. And believe me, they are not brittle at all. I'll leave you a document where you can find the links to the materials you're going to need in the description box. I'll also provide you with a few flowcharts that highlight the many steps of the process. That's pretty helpful in case you get lost. We're going to be making two different versions of the rings. First, we have the simple ring, in which we use embed a tag and don't add any additional things to the ring. Then we have the custom ring. Here, we're not only embedding an NSC tag, but we're also adding an LED tag and two extra LEDs that we light up. We're also going to dye the ring. This process is more complex, but it makes the rings more appealing. So this video will be divided into two main sections. First, we'll make the simple version of the ring. And then we're going to take it a step further and create a more custom ring that we light up. That being said, let's get down to the nitty gritty. The ring making process consists of four crucial parts, as you can see in this simple diagram. So let's start with part one, preparing the veneer. First thing first, you need to get thin veneer sheets. I bought myself four different types. The European maple, American linden, which is tied in black, the Indian rosewood, and bloodwood veneer. The only one that I couldn't successfully make a ring out of was the bloodwood veneer. It just doesn't roll well. As for the others, all of them are really easy to work with. I have not tested other types of veneer. If you're interested in trying different types of veneers, I recommend that you watch this video where they compare various kinds of veneers and how easy it is to work with each of them. Now that you have your veneer, we can start making the rings. So grab the veneer sheet and mark a strip that is 1.5 cm wide and 2 cm long. Put the veneer on top of a cardboard piece to avoid damaging your table before you start cutting. I recommend using an exacto knife and a metal ruler with a core backing to help you cut the strips. You might need 2 or 3 passes to cut it. Just a quick pass here. I want a number 10 and a half ring size. The amount of veneer needed to make them is roughly 21.5 centimeters. If you don't know what ring size you need, I advise that you get yourself some wire and use this ring sizer as a template to make a couple of rings in various sizes to see what works for you. Make several of them and then wear them for two or three days to see how comfortable they are doing your everyday tasks. That way you will find out your ring size. Let's continue. Once you have your veneer strips, put the veneer in a pot or pan filled with water. Then bring the water to a boil for about 10 minutes. In the meantime, find a tube, socket, or a cylindrical object about the same size as the ring you're trying to make. After 10 minutes, take the veneer out of the water and try wrapping it around the cylindrical object. If the veneer is too stiff and it seems like it might break when you roll it, put it back in the boiling water for a few minutes before trying again. If you repeat this process for 20 minutes and it still doesn't work, you can try this trick. Find a bigger core and wrap the veneer around it. I'm using a piece of tape to secure and hold it together. Leave it there to cool down for about 10 minutes. Then undo the tape and put the veneer back in boiling water for another 10 minutes. Then when you take it out again, you will notice that this time you will be able to wrap it around the smaller core with ease. Now, Secure the veneer to the smaller cork with a piece of tape and let it dry completely overnight. This is all we need to do for right now. Once the veneer is dry, we can start on the next step. To continue, we're going to need sockets like this. You can find them at your local hardware store. They are going to be our templates to make the rings. They come in different sizes. This is a number 14 socket which has an outer diameter of 19.6 millimeters. 
It is very close to my ring size, 10.5, which has a diameter of 20.2 mm. So, you'll need to get a socket closest in diameter to the ring size you want to make. Another thing we need is this special tape called Tyvek tape. We're going to be working with super glue, and super glue doesn't stick to this kind of tape. You can also use wax paper, but believe me, things will be a lot easier if you use this tape. Once you got a socket closest to the ring size you want to make, you're going to wrap the Tyvek tape around the socket until it is the same diameter as the ring size. Each whole turn of Tyvek tape increases the diameter by about 1.5 mm. Since my socket diameter was 19.6 mm, I added 4 complete turns of tape to increase the diameter to 20.2 mm, which is exactly the diameter of my ring size. Next, grab your veneer and roll it. Sand one of the ends of the veneer lightly. We need to create a taper end so that it will blend in nicely with the inner layers later. Clean off the veneer with a brush and then use a piece of tape to get rid of any debris that might be left over. For the next step, I recommend you that you use a piece of cardboard and put some Tyvek tape on it. This will serve us as our workspace. Also, let's not forget about safety. Use a mask and wear eye protection. Alright, find some heavy objects or other tools that can be used as weights to keep the veneer strip straight in the seal. Then, carefully unroll the veneer and put the weight at the end of the strip to keep it immobilized for a moment. This is where we'll start rolling the veneer with the help of a socket. It is crucial that you maintain consistent pressure while rolling to keep the layers as tight as possible. The room will have three layers of veneer, in other words, three complete turns. Adding more layers will make the ring uncomfortable to wear. After you reach the third layer, cut off the excess veneer while keeping the ring roll. To keep the layers lined up nicely, Turn the socket sideways so it is standing up, then just press the ring against the flat surface you're working on. Now, use a piece of tape to secure the veneer so it doesn't unroll. Take the ring halfway off the socket, press the veneer against the socket to compress the layers together, and immediately apply a small amount of CA glue, which is just another knife for super glue. This will secure it momentarily and prevent it from unrolling. Once the glue is dry, Take the ring off the socket, turn it around, and pull it back halfway so that the glue half is sticking out, then add CA glue to that end. Since we're going to embed the NSC tag in the second layer, you're going to grab a pen and put a mark where the NSC tag will be placed. Using the outer end of the ring as a guide, the mark should be perpendicular to it. After that, unroll the ring and add more glue to the inner end to secure it even further for the next step. Put the ring back on the socket and use a weight to keep the socket still. Then, carefully unroll the veneer and put another weight on the end so that the entire strip is straight. Now, find the mark in the second layer where the NSC tank will be placed. Use a caliper to find the center point across the width of the veneer. You can try to eyeball it if you don't have a caliper. Then mark two perpendicular lines that intersect at the point as shown. Next, cut a thin piece of tape, grab an NSC tag, and stick the tape on the tag. Put the tape on the veneer strip so that the NSC tag is completely centered using the lines as guides. With your exacto knife, start cutting out the stall for the NSC tag. Be very careful here. Remove the tag, and with the knife, Make the slot just slightly bigger than the tag to have a little more leeway when placing it later on. It's time to really start forming and gluing the ring. Since we'll be working with CA glue a lot, we need to protect our hands. So here is what I do. Grab a pair of gloves and pull one on. Then, cut several pieces of Tyvek tape and cover your fingers with them. I noticed that I mostly work with only four fingers but you might want to cover all of them just to be safe. Grab the other glove and do the same thing for your other hand. By doing this, you will prevent the CA glue and whatever thing you're handling from sticking to your fingers. I'm just going to use one glove to work with the glue, 
while my other hand is uncovered. I found it easier to go like this for this particular part, but you should do what feels more comfortable. Ok, to make sure that the ring's layers line up to one another, we're going to roll the ring with the socket standing up. Apply a small amount of CA glue to the veneer as shown, and immediately roll it to glue the surfaces together. Wait at least 5 seconds to let it cure. Next, apply downward pressure along the edges to keep them lined up. Also, apply consistent pressure toward the veneer surface when gluing to compact the layers as much as possible. When you're getting to the third layer, stop gluing once the cutout for the tag is pointing up. Then, carefully grab the NNC tag, put it in the slot, and completely glue it to the ring. Excellent. Now, this next step is completely optional, but you might want to mark where the NSC tag is placed in the ring. If you use the ring constantly with a reader, you might find that sometimes the reader doesn't detect the tag. This mainly happens when the tag is not directly facing the reader. Whether intentionally or not, the ring moves around your finger throughout the day. So putting a mark where the NSC tag is located will solve this minor inconvenience. And you will always know where to point the ring when scanning it. Believe it or not, I use these small nails or pins as marks. I just cut off their heads to get these oval looking things, which would be the marks. And just like we did before, you need to find the tag and the center point before putting a pen mark there. Lastly, you need to make a hole that is smaller than the pin mark. I like using a drill with a power bit to create this almost conical shaped hole so that the mark can sit nicely in there. At this point, you should glue it to the veneer strip. I forgot to do it here because it was a last minute change, and I was not planning on doing it. But for the rest of the video, I assume that the ring already has the mark on it, even though the forage I show you says otherwise. Thanks for understanding. Alright, let's continue by applying CA glue and rolling the veneer, until the ring is formed in its entirety. When you're done, take the ring off of the socket. To finish this part, we're going to fill the ring's edges with CA glue to reinforce it. To avoid getting the glue on the inner and outer faces, I will use some painter's tape to form a sort of a wall around the edges of the ring to isolate them. Now, very carefully add a few drops of CA glue to one of the edges, shake or grip the ring a few taps to allow the glue to penetrate deeper and soak into the layers. The glue might take several seconds to cure before adding more glue, so be patient during this step. Continue this process until you see that the edges are completely filled in, and then do the same thing for the other side. When the glue has completely cured, peel off as much tape as you can before moving on to the next step. Ok, let's continue to the next part. We are now ready to start sanding. First, you are going to grab a piece of 220 grit sandpaper and sand the outer end of your ring. As you probably guessed. We do this in order to help the end blend in seamlessly with the layer below. Alright, before we proceed to the next step, you have to keep this in mind. For the sanding and the polishing steps, I use a drill to make the workflow faster and easier. Of course, you can do things manually, but it's going to take quite a bit of time. My setup consists of a piece of wood that serves as a base to hold the drill. I created these holders with some wire to keep the drill in place and secure them with two pairs of screws. Then, with some more wire, I improvised and created this holder to mount this attachment so that it will be connected to the holes of a vacuum cleaner. This will help you keep everything clean and dust free. If you haven't figured it out yet, yes, this is the poor man's version of a lathe with a built-in dust collector. Nice. After that, I will insert the sanding disc adapter into the drill and put on the 220 grit sandpaper. Power up the drill and set the speed to medium. At this point, I would also turn on the vacuum cleaner. Grab the ring and very lightly sand one of the edges to remove the excess glue from the previous step. Repeat this step on the other side, just remember to not overdo it. When you're done, use a caliper to measure the width of the ring. We know the veneer strips were one and a half to start off with, but this volume are changed slightly, so you have to double check. With that noted, you need to decide the width, or the thickness if you prefer, of your ring. 
I decided to go with a height of 10 millimeters. I advise against going with anything smaller, because you run the risk of damaging the NSC tags when sanding. The tags are barely 6 millimeters in width, so keep that in mind. To get to 10 millimeters, I had to sand each side to remove 2.5 millimeters of material. Before we start sanding, you can try marking the edges of the rim with a pen. This will help you keep track of which side you're sanding. Then, I start sanding one side. After a couple seconds, I stop and merge with the ring to see your progress. Keep doing this until you have removed 2 mm of material. Then repeat the same process on the other side. By doing this, you make sure that you don't over sand one side and risk damaging the tag. 10 mm. Perfect. Next. We're going to send the inner face of the ring. Find a socket smaller than the ring diameter. I am using the number 12 socket. Then cut a piece of 220 grit sandpaper and wrap it around the socket. With the socket installed on the drill, set the speed to log and make sure that it spins in the right direction. Then you can start sanding the inner face of the ring by turning the ring slowly with your finger in the opposite direction that the drill is spinning in so the surface is sanded evenly. What we want here is to get rid of the leftover tape and glue to make the ring surface smooth to the touch. Don't go too crazy here and avoid removing too much material. If you want the ring edges to have more of a bevel or a smoother outline, you can try to sand the edges at an angle. Play around until you find a look you like. When you're done, flip the ring and do the same to the other side. Now, take the socket out and change the sandpaper to 600 grit. With this sandpaper, we will smooth the surface even more to reach its final texture. Before continuing, clean the rim with a brush and then use a piece of tape to remove any small debris. Now, you're going to sand it and repeat the same process. Constantly check the surface by putting the ring on your finger until it feels completely smooth and free of bumps. The next step is to sand the outer face of the ring. I got myself this ring holder or mandrel, which will help me do it. It's not perfect, but it works for this purpose. Put the mandrel in the drill. You're going to insert the ring on the mandrel and then secure it by turning the screw, so it doesn't move around. Before you power up the drill, change the settings so that your drill spins counterclockwise, otherwise the screw from the mandrel will get loose and come out. Then. Go ahead and start sanding the ring with a 220 grit sandpaper, just like we did before with the inner face. Flip the ring to the other side to make sure both sides are evenly sanded. If you decided to pull the mark, also make sure to sand the area around it evenly, so that it blends in with the surface nicely and there are no bumps. After that, again, you'll use a piece of 600 grit sandpaper Polish up the surface to its final texture. Also, don't forget to smooth the edges if you were initially planning to do so. When you're done, you can manually sand the ring to smooth minor imperfections where you might have missed. At this point, your ring should feel smooth to the touch, and we're ready for the last part finishing the ring. To finish the ring, we're just going to apply several coats of CA glue. I recommend you get these paper towels commonly used for automotive applications. What you're going to do is cut a sheet of these paper towels. Then, you're going to fold it in half. And continue folding it in another half three times, until you get something that looks like this. Next, cut the paper towel along the folded lines. In the end, you're going to have 16 squares, which we're going to use to apply the CA glue coating. Good. We're going to first coat the inner face of the ring. From now on, you should wear gloves with Tyvek tape on both hands. Things can get pretty messy with the glue, and don't forget your goggles, unless you're an analyst and don't mind becoming blind. If you accidentally get glue on your hands like I did, as you see in the forage, don't panic. Just let it cure before trying to scrape off as much as you can. Then wash your hands under one running water to remove it completely. 
What we are going to do is to use half of the square tiles we just cut and apply two sets of CA glue coats. Each set is equal to eight coats. You will see what I'm talking about in a second. You're going to grab one of the square tiles and fold it in half twice. Soak one end until half the towel is completely soaking glue. This is very important. I found that applying the coats while holding the towel on my finger like this works best for me. Grab and hold the ring with your other hand like this. Then, quickly coat the inside by rotating your finger around the surface of the ring so that it's coated evenly. Give it four passes. Again, I can't stress this enough. You'll need to be quick here, otherwise you will glue the paper towel on the ring. Let the glue sit for at least 20 seconds. The longer you wait, the better. After that, you can apply this activator. This product will instantly make the CA glue cure, so it will speed up the finishing process. To apply it, point the can towards the ring at a distance of about 30 centimeters. Then spray two or three short pores, and this will do it. After spraying the activator, let it sit for another 20 seconds. Please be aware of which side of the ring you're coating, because if you forget, you might end up over or under coating one side. Don't discard the paper towel because now you will use the other end and repeat the same process. Dump the towel with CA glue and coat the ring on the same side as before. Let the glue sit for 20 seconds before applying the activator, just like before. You're going to repeat all these steps until you have used up four squares of paper towel. Once in a while, remember to also coat the edges of the ring to keep it smooth. Use the activator in between every complete pass. Remember that you should give two coats for each square towel. So at the end, that side will have eight coats. Please, don't let your hand holding the ring touch the CA glue at all. If you do, you will likely end up contaminating the outside of the ring with glue and fibers from the paper towel, and we don't want to call the outer face yet. If that ever happens, you need to sand those abundant spots with 600 grit sandpaper. When you're done with the eight coats, turn the ring to the other side, and you will repeat the same process. This way, both sides will be evenly coated. As you can see, we use four paper towels to apply eight coats, so in the end, the inner surface will have 16 coats in total, and that should be it. Of course, the number of coats is completely optional. You can actually control the diameter of the ring by varying the number of coats applied. If you over sanded the inner surface of the ring, you can make up for that by applying more coats to it. For example, here I have two rings. This one had a diameter of 20.6 mm before the coating, and after applying the eight coats, the diameter is now 20.4 mm. This other ring had a diameter of 20.9 mm before the coating, and after applying the 16 coats, the diameter decreased to 20.5 mm. From that, we can infer that for 8 coats of CA glue, the ring diameter will decrease by about 2 mm. So use this information to help you decide how many coats of glue you need to get to the ring size you're aiming for. Now, you're going to insert and secure the ring on the mandrel because we're going to finish the outer face. Don't insert it completely through the mandrel. You want to leave the edges exposed so we have enough room to coat them. Set the speed of the drill to somewhere around slow to medium. We are again going to apply two sets of eight coats, grab one of the square tiles, and this time only fold it in half twice. From here on, you're going to repeat all the same steps we did before. First, Add CA glue to the towel to completely dampen the area from the end to the middle part. Apply the first coat on the ring by pressing it with the towel using moderate pressure and a swapping movement for about 8 seconds. Again, do this fast so you don't end up gluing the paper towel on the ring. Then, let the coat sit for at least 20 seconds before applying the activator. Give it 2 or 3 pours of sprays and wait another 20 seconds. Again, reuse the other end of the paper towel dampen it with CA glue, and make another pass to coat the ring. Wait and let the glue sit for 20 seconds before applying the activator. Repeat this process until you have used out 4 squares of paper towel. Don't forget to coat the edges once in a while, so everything is smooth and even. When you're done with the 8 coats, stop and take the ring off of the mandrel. Then, 
turned around and inserted back on the mandrel and continued the same process of applying eight coats to the other side. I like applying this amount of glue coats to achieve that glossy finish that feels very smooth to the touch. Take your time while doing it because this is the final look your ring will have. And there it is! The ring is finally complete and ready to be used. If you want something more challenging than this simple ring, now it's time to make the version of the ring that lights up. So let's get started with the second part of this video. The custom version of the ring will have an LED tag embedded in it. You have different LED color options, so choose what you like. We're also going to add two extra tiny LEDs to enhance this feature. It definitely looks amazing in the dark. We're also going to dye the ring because, why not? Of course, you might want to create a ring that only has the LED tag, so use this section as a guide to help you do it and ignore the extra steps along the way. Remember that the ring making process consists of four parts. Since many of the steps to make a second version of the ring are pretty much identical to that of the simple ring, I will only highlight the differences in making this ring. I'm going to skip many of the redundant steps to not make the video longer. Alright, to prepare the veneer, you're going to follow the same process as shown for the simple ring. The only difference is that you're going to use a clear sheet of veneer, since we will dye it later. Of course, you can also skip this step if you prefer to use the veneer as is. I use a European maple flame veneer here, and it works just fine. Now, for the rolling and gluing part, this is where we're going to spend a lot of our time on. Don't worry, there will be an extra flowchart for this part for you to check out if you get lost. Anyway, after you have sanded the outer end, this is where you need to dye the veneer strip. I'm going to use this blue alcohol base dye. There are many colors to choose from, so pick whatever you like. I had a good experience with these dyes, and the colors are very bright. Before we continue, I just want to point out that if you plan on dyeing the veneer black, there isn't much difference between dyeing it and buying already black dye veneer. However, dyeing it manually will allow you to achieve a deeper tone. You choose what looks best to you. To dye the veneer, I use a paper towel which I soak with the dye. Also, remember to use gloves to avoid getting it on your skin. I rub the paper towel on the veneer until it is completely covered with the dye. And that's it. Next, you're going to roll the veneer as you would normally and cut off the end after reaching the third layer. Here, you want to dye the edge of the outer end to ensure you don't have uncolor areas. We will repeat this step a couple of times during this part. Once that is out of the way, continue with the same process as shown with the symbol ring. Now, we're going to mark the placement of the tags and LEDs on the ring. This time, you're going to add an extra mark for the LED tag as shown. Again, use the outer end as a point of reference. The mark closest to the outer end of the strip will be where the NNC tag will be placed. Cut the excess tape to reveal the edges of the ring. Grab the caliper and a pen to mark two points on the ring, each of them 9.5mm apart from the center point where the LED tag will be placed. Those are for the two extra LEDs we are going to add. Make sure those marks are completely centered and also mark them on the edge of the ring. We're going to need it later. Then, grab a pointy tool and make a hole on the surface of the ring for all three marks. Don't go all the way through, it only has to be visible on the two top layers. Next, take off the tape and unroll the ring. Grab a small drill bit and manually make a hole for each of the three marks. You will do this for the top layer and the one below it. By doing this, we make sure that these holes are perfect circles. Again, dye the edges of the holes on the veneer to cover the exposed areas. Once you have secured the veneer strip, in order to cut out the holes, mark the reference lines where you place both tags on the veneer. After that, place the LED tag and cut the hole for it. Make sure that the tiny LEDs on the tag are what would be centered on the lines. Remember that it has to line up with the hole we just previously made. Using the marks on the veneer and a knife, make a channel to join them with the hole for the LED tag. This is for running the wires to power up the LEDs. You should end up with something that looks like this. Then go ahead and cut out the hole for the NSC tag. 
Now, you're going to start gluing the ring into its final shape. When you are starting to glue the stuff for the energy tag, you're going to stop here. Grab the energy tag and peel off its sticky pack. Put the tag in its hole and center it using the LED and the line you mark as guides. You are going to roll the ring and adjust the position of the LED tag so that the center hole lines up with the LED in the tag. You must do this correctly. After double checking that it is properly lined up, you are going to apply a small amount of glue to the tag just to secure it for now. With an exacto knife, you are going to cut the thin plastic that surrounds the LED and electronics while leaving the antenna cover. Be very careful here, you don't want to damage the fragile wires going to the antenna. Then add glue to the tip of the exacto knife. You are going to use the knife tip to apply a coat to all the electronic components as well as the antenna. But don't coat the LED. By doing this, we are adding a layer of protection against heat and shorts once we start soldering. I'm going to use these tiny LEDs for the next step. The fact that they come wire will make our job much easier. You can find it in different colors, and even though they are small, they give off a bright light. Cut the wires above this tongue, and then with some glue, you're going to secure them into their respective spots. Try using tape to hold them in place while you're gluing it. Use accelerator if you need to. You have to make sure that the LEDs point up as they are the brightest in that position. Now it's time for soldering. This is the most finicky step in the whole process. Have your soldering iron ready and go ahead and strip back the insulation from the LED wires. If needed, you can cut the wires shorter, so we just have enough to solder them to the LED leads. This picture shows you the polarity of the LED on the tag. The black wires will go to the negative lead and the red wires will go to the positive lead. Join the wires from the LEDs with their respective color. And here is where you're going to start soldering. First off, thin both wires. Then start by soldering the positive terminal. Remember that this is the positive side of the LED. Be extremely careful. You really have to be patient here, as you can easily overheat electronics and damage them. Don't let the tip of the soldering iron touch the LED for too long and let it cool down completely between every attempt if you fail to get it right on the first try. It happened to me very often. Once that is done, start with the negative terminal. Make sure that you run the wires on the same side as the wires for the positive terminal. Otherwise, you run the risk of shortening it with this tiny wire right here. I speak from experience. Also, make sure that the wires are flat and that there are no big plots of solder that protrude too far out from the slot of the tag. To make sure that everything is working perfectly, you need an NC reader to turn the tag on. If you have a newer smartphone, it might already come with NC integration. In that case, turn it on and place your phone close to the tag. The LEDs should turn on. And if you have the Kiles technician board from the previous video, you can use it as well. Perfect. Now that we know it works, you can start applying glue to the wires so that they are completely flat. Also, add more glue to the tag and LEDs to further secure them. Put the ring back on the socket and continue rolling and gluing the veneer until the slot for the NNC tag is completely glued to the first layer. Stop here. Roll the ring again without gluing it and check that the holes are lined up with all the LEDs. Once you have double checked that, apply consistent pressure all around the surface close to the LED tag. Right after that, add glue to all three LED holes. When the glue has cured, this is where you now have to glue the NSC tag to the ring. Also, you need to glue the mark now if you want one. As you can see, the mark is again positioned at the certain point of the NSC tag. From here, finish gluing the ring. At the end, add more CA glue to all the holes for the LEDs and also to the outer end of the veneer. Do this until the holes are completely flooded. We don't want any hollow space between the layers as it can weaken the ring. 
There you have it. From here on, continue with adding glue to the edges before you move on to sanding. You're going to grab a piece of 600 grit sandpaper and remove as much of the excess glue and tape from the ring as possible. From here, you're going to pretty much follow the standard sanding process. At the end, you reapply the dye on the ring to cover any uncolored spots. For the finishing part, you're going to follow the exact same steps. And that is it. This is how you make NFC rings. Of course, you can always try different designs on it. If you look around on the web, there are thousands of different designs that people have come up with. And as the saying goes, your only limit is your imagination. So please, do share your designs with us. They will be very interesting to look at. To wrap up this video, I just want to remind you of the document. If you have any issues or know of a better way to do things, I welcome any suggestions. I will continuously update the document based on your feedback, so be sure to check it out once in a while. Other than that, that's it for today. My name is Christian, and I'll see you in the next one.